Can you answer this quiz question? Router 1 on the left pings router 5. In other words, it pings the loopback address of 1.1.1.1. Which route will the ICMP echo traffic take? Have a look at the figure for the routes advertised. So in this example, router 2 is advertising network 1.0.0.0.8 via EIGRP to router 1. Router 3 is advertising 1.1.1.0/24 via OSPF and RIP is advertising 1.1.1.1/32 to router 1. So in other words, router 2 is advertising this network using EIGRP to router 1. Router 3 is advertising this network via OSPF to router 1. Router 4 is advertising this network via RIP to router 1. Which path will router 1 take? when it pings router 5. Now I've built this topology in GNS3. If you need more time to answer this question, then pause the video now, but otherwise continue watching and I'll show you the answer to this question. So which way will router 1 send traffic to the loopback of router 5 if router 5 has IP address 1.1.1 dot one slash 32 configured on the loopback interface and router one is learning about that loopback from router two three and four using different protocols which way will the traffic go okay so let's have a look at router one here's router one show ip route this shows us the routing table Notice router 1 has learnt about network 1000/8. 1 is a class A network, so hence it's shown as follows. It's learnt about this network 1.0.0.0/8 from a router with this IP address out of this interface. In other words, this interface in the diagram that is router 2. So router 1 can get to that network via router 2, but it can also get to that network via router 3. Notice this was learnt through OSPF as network 1.1.1.0/24. It also learnt about that network from RIP. Notice IP address 1.1.1.1/32. Now notice the administrative distances of these routing protocols. The lower the administrative distance, the more believable a routing protocol. Cisco discuss administrative distances on their website. So as an example, we can see the default administrative distances for various routing protocols. Internal EIGRP is 90, as we've seen, OSPF is 110, and RIP is 120. The lower the number, the more likely that routing protocol will be selected. The lower the number, the more believable a routing protocol. But notice these are three separate routes from the router's point of view. They are not the same route, so administrative distance is not used. If I trace to the loopback of router 5, the traffic is going to 10.1.3.2 and then to 10.1.6.2. If we look at router 4, so here's router 4 and have a look at the IP addresses on the router. Notice interface serial 1 slash 0 has this IP address. So router 1 is sending the traffic to router 4 and then router 4 is sending the traffic to router 5 out of this interface. We can confirm that by looking at router 5's IP addresses. On router 5, show IP interface brief. Notice it has this IP address, 10.1.5.2. Notice it has this IP address, 10.1.6.2 on serial 1.2. Go back to router 4, 
interface serial one slash one has IP address 10161. So the traffic is going across this link, but was received on this interface. So again, if we look at router one, router one is sending the traffic to router four, which in turn is sending it to router five. Now the reason for that once again is show IP route. These are seen as three different networks. Administrative distance is not used here. Administrative distance is only used if the routes are the same. So as an example, if I went on to router two and changed the configuration. So here's router two, show run, interface serial, one slash zero. Notice I've got a summary route here. If I removed that summary route, so that a specific route is advertised to router one, Notice summary route is removed. So back on router one, show IP route. Notice summary route is no longer there. It was there previously. EIGRP advertised this route, but now EIGRP is advertising this route. Notice the RIP route has disappeared from the routing table. Previously, we had this RIP route, 1.1.1.1 slash 32, 120 admin distance RIP route. That's been replaced with an EIGRP route because the administrative distance is lower. The router still knows about the route through RIP. So it still knows about this route. It knows about that route through EIGRP. There's the route in the EIGRP topology database. Again, there's the route in the RIP database. But because of administrative distance, the EIGRP route is put into the routing table. It has a lower administrative distance. So the traffic goes via router two. Notice outbound interface is serial one slash zero. IP address of the next top is 10.1.1.2 on router two. Show IP interface brief. We can see that's the IP address of router two. So it's really important that you understand administrative distances for the CCNA exam, but also understand that longest match wins. RIP wins because it has a longer match. Slash 32 is longer than slash 24, which is longer than slash 8. So even though RIP has a higher administrative distance, it is chosen because of the longest match. Longest match wins. But if EIGRP and RIP advertise the same route with the same match of slash 32, so longest match, then administrative distance is chosen as a tiebreaker. Admin distance is chosen to select one routing protocol over another if both of them are advertising the same route. So in the first example, RIP won because it had the longest match. But in the second example, EIGRP won because both RIP and EIGRP had the longest match, slash 32. But EIGRP's admin distance is lower than RIP, so EIGRP is preferred. I hope you're enjoying these quiz questions. I'm David Bomble, coming to you from Lanzarote, beautiful island. I want to wish you all the very best.